Hi, everyone. Welcome to All About the Joy. This is the podcast, and I am so excited to kind of talk about a few things that happened this week. I had a really tough, tough week, and it wasn't bad and it wasn't good, but there were moments of absolute joy, and I want to share them with you. I hope you had a great week as well, and I hope you were able to hang out with us on the live stream on Thursday. It was kind of fun. We just talked about Not all things Star Wars, but because it was, you know, may the force be with you on Thursday, we kind of touched on that. But then we went down a whole rabbit hole of other sci-fi stuff that we're both kind of into. And the interesting thing about Rick is that we are just such opposite people, but we have figured out a way to get along. Uh, He is extremely, I shouldn't say extremely because that makes it sound weird, but he's very religious. I'm not at all. We have very different viewpoints on a lot of things when it comes to major big issues. And yet we can have these conversations and we have conversations. We've had conversations about politics, about abortion, about different things and not on the live stream yet because the live stream and the show is really about just hanging out and joy. But the reason why it's so important to me to talk about it is I wish as a country, as a society, as a world, we would just get better at communication with each other, right? And it's not just about respect and dignity. And it's it's also about how we choose to bring things to the table, our tone. And I feel really comfortable that I can really criticize most people and do it in such a way that you're getting the information you need but you're not feeling like a horrible human being for getting that information, right? So if I have to rectify something at work with a team member or with somebody I'm working with, I am not going to talk down to them and be condescending or being like, I can't believe you messed this up again. You know, um, I work with, a, with, I have work and I work with some organizations right now where There's a lot of yelling and a lot of screaming and a lot of putting down of people. You cannot help each other. You cannot fix things or criticize people or help get the things that you need when you are stepping on someone and trying to lift yourself up at the same time. You cannot get people to do what you need them to do when you are putting them down and pushing them into the ground. What you need to do is be able to lift people up. If someone is so incompetent that you feel the need to be screaming and yelling at the top of your lungs about something, that person should not be in your life. Fire them. Find somebody else who can do the work for you, right? So it's been an interesting week. And again, the way in which I communicate with a lot of the team members I work with is just awesome and brilliant. And I love it. And I love that Rick and I are such complete opposites on so many things. And yet we can have just full on conversations and disagreements where, you know, we'll both say things like, "Mm, it's just not, I'll think about it, but it's just not my thing. I don't agree with you. And, and then we move on, even though we've had a full like hour conversation about it. So something to think about, you know, be careful and mindful of your tone this week. See if you can change the way in which you choose to rectify a mistake that someone's made, or if there's a way in which you can talk to someone as opposed to down to someone, right? So let me tell you something else that was amazing this week. I had a few moments where I just was like, this is awesome. So I want to share it with you. I was walking to FedEx. I had to go drop off a few things to make sure they were sent away as quickly as possible. You know, we all do those errands or whatever. And as I was getting out of my car, an older gentleman, I mean, maybe he was in his 70s, 80s, I don't know, but he was older, white hair, and he was walking and he had a rose right? He had a rose on his lapel or on his pocket or whatever. I mean, he wasn't wearing a suit or anything, but clearly he had picked a rose and he had kind of put it in his pocket. And when I got out of the car, I walked over, you know, to get the boxes, things I had. And I saw him and I clearly, the the rose, the flower clearly was something I noticed right away. And I kind of just smiled at him. And then I went into FedEx. Actually, it wasn't FedEx. It was UPS. But it doesn't matter. I walked into UPS. I dropped off boxes. There was nobody in line. I walked back out. And, and he was still there. 
And now he was standing there with the rose in his hand and it had a short stem. And I looked at him and he was like, for you. And he clearly had an accent. I don't know where from. And he handed me the rose and, and then he kind of put his arms out for a hug and I hugged him and it was cool. And he kind of kissed me on the forehead and then that was it. And I thought that never happens. And I said, have a beautiful day. I was shocked by it. And yet I thought I wasn't shocked by it. It was so cool. It was so awesome. So I came home, I took the little rose because it was just a short stem and I just put it in a little glass. I just put a little bit of water in it and I put the rose in there and it's lasted for the past five days. And of course today it's kind of like, you know, it's losing its bloom, but it it just smelled so good. It didn't matter. I was just so happy about it. I was so joyful about it. And, and it, kind of helped my whole week because every time I came home and I saw it kind of, I, I didn't place it exactly in the window, but I gave it some light and I would just, it was just so happy because I thought this is the world we should live in where people can be kind and nice to each other, right? He was just being in a good space and spirit. And so was I, and it was so cool. So that's one thing that happened that I really just loved and and I wish our world was better about being kind to each other and generous for no reason and just being lovely. And, you know, I'll never forget that man. I don't know who he is, but it was just awesome. So I don't know what to do with the petals now or what, I, I, like, I don't want it to die, but I can tell it's the, the rose is dying. Anyways, I'm a little sentimental about it. It was kind of a cool thing. The other thing that happened, and this is going to be a little surprising, happened with lawyers. <laughs> I've had to hire some new lawyers for myself because I would never use lawyers that work for my clients. This is not a bad thing. I'm just inquiring and making sure that I'm doing something correctly on a project I'm working for, for myself. And, you know, as much as I can Google and try to learn everything, there are just some things I want to make sure I do correctly. So I'm like, let me try to find a lawyer. So I went through a referral process and I ended up talking to four lawyers and, you know, two of them I knew right away when I was talking to them, it wasn't going to work. The other two, I, first of all, if I had just picked the first person I spoke to, but I'd already scheduled appointments, he would have been my lawyer. But when I spoke to him, his name was Aaron. And then I spoke to another lawyer the day after. And, and I thought, you know what, it's definitely going to be the, the lawyer that I like. It's, I'm going to pick him. And then the other lawyer I talked to, I was like, oh my God, I like him too. They were both about the same price. They both are offering the same service. They were both kind. They were both generous with their free consultation. By the way, if you're going to get any service at all that you're going to pay a good chunk of money to, and people don't offer you a 10 or 15 minute consultation, do not use them. Just don't. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? This kind of idea that lawyers want you, or it's not just lawyers, lawyers it's professional. There's acting schools out here that will not let people go and see a class, just audit a class. And I always tell new actors who come here, don't, then don't sign up for anything because you're about to pay five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars to a school, a studio that won't even let you go in and audit a class. So be aware of that. When you're going to hire people for a service, you should be able to have a conversation with them. So I want to say thank you to all those lawyers that did allow for a 10, 15 minute conversation. But anyway, back to these two cool lawyers. After I got off the phone on Friday with this other lawyer, I literally had to flip a coin, literally had to flip a coin because I didn't know which one to pick. I didn't have a reason to not pick one or the other. So the, so anyway, I had to pick one. I picked the one that I worked with on Friday. And then Aaron, who's the one on Thursday, I sent, I had to send him an email. I had to send the other two as well, but that was easy because I was like, I've decided to go with another lawyer. I'm done. Bye. You know what I mean? That was nice. But I was like, I've decided to go with another lawyer. Thank you for your time. And that was it. But with Aaron, I was like, I hated writing the email I had to send to him. And I was a little bit more thorough. And I explained to him that I actually did a coin toss because I really liked him. And I just thought like, I love good people. I love authentic people. And you're probably wondering like, what was it? that made me like these two lawyers. You know what? I'm looking for kindness. If I'm already getting a referral about you, you already know how to do your job, right? I'm, I'm 
I'm going through a referral. So I know that you know how to do the stuff I need you to do. And their prices were reasonable and about the same. And I am looking for people that I can connect with that kind of get me, that don't talk down to me, right? Just to bring it back to the beginning, that have authenticity, not just in their voice, but in their ability to uh, answer a question, understanding that not everybody is an expert. That's why we're calling them. The other two lawyers that I rejected right away were kind of condescending, you know, and it, again, it's about tone. It's about how you choose to deliver information. You can say to me, oh, I have done that so many times. Yeah, it makes complete sense that you wouldn't know anything about it. I mean, that's why you want to hire me. Yeah, that tone, that's condescending. That's like pompous. That's just ridiculous. And one of them said that to me. The way in which you can deliver that information would be something simple like, you know what? You're not the only one that kind of questions whether or not that's the way to do things. And I love your due diligence in that you went on Google and you went to the secretary of state and you went to the government and you tried to figure it out. But yeah, that is something in my wheelhouse. That's exactly what these other two lawyers, the way in which they did it, they they made me feel really good about the effort I had made and then let me know that this is something that they have done consistently over and over again without making me feel bad about it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So I really am always looking for people to be on my team, no matter what it is, like people that are going to be in my life, especially if I'm paying you, but especially if I'm not paying you, like if you're going to be in my life, I need you to get me and be on the same kind of level that I'm at, which is this place where we are always doing the best we can to lift each other up, to take care of each other and to talk to each other in a way that is not just respectful and from a place of dignity and kindness, but that is really all about joy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so tacky about it, but positivity, right? Silver lining. Let's see the best in people, not the worst. Let's treat people as kings and queens, right? Let's treat them like everyone deserves the same respect and dignity that we would give anyone else of stature. I don't care if you're homeless. I don't care if you're the president of the United States. I don't care if you're, you know, a celebrity of Beyonce stature or if you're Oprah Winfrey, I'm going to treat you all the same. You don't get a different Carmen when I walk in the door. And that's how I want you to treat me. Like I am as important as your most dignified, whatever client you think you have, right? If you can't do that, we're not going to connect. We're not going to connect. And also don't act like you're doing me a favor, right? If I'm about to pay you some serious bank you're not doing me a favor. That's the other thing at work that just cracks me up. I keep thinking to people like, you know, you are paying me for services. I I am not here to be someone that you think you can beat up because I can walk right out the door. This is a mutual thing, you know? But I think I think sometimes people who are CEOs and bosses and own companies or whatever, they actually think they're doing their employees and their staff and their vendors a favor. So they think they can talk to people in a condescending, nasty, terrible way. And you know what all that does is break people down and make people feel horrible. It doesn't make people work harder, better, smarter, and they're just going to keep making mistakes. I think that's the thing that people don't understand. When you are condescending in your tone, when you are mean to people, when you put people down to lift yourself up, because that's what you're doing, right? When you turn around and you're like, you're wrong, you're, you don't know what you're doing, you're bad. How can you not do this? All you're doing is trying to make yourself smart. But a real leader would turn around, a real good person would turn around and say, hey, look it. This isn't working. The way in which you did this, I understand why you thought this would work or I understand why this mistake happened. How can I help you to fix this for the future? What do you need in order to make this work? Because I need this information every week, right? If you get into an environment 
where you're in a place where you feel nurtured, where you feel like people are there to support you, you're going to stay and do what you need to do to make sure this person is protected at all costs, right? But when your boss is treating you like crap, you don't care. You end up having an attitude. You end up being like, whatever, who cares? We'll just do it because he's going to yell anyways. It's an interesting dynamic. I love, I love watching and understanding how people function. And I'm telling you, it's all about tone. It's all about the way in which you choose to get the information you need from people. It's the way in which you choose to talk to people. And if you're coming from an authentic, positive place, you're not going to treat people like crap. You're just not. But if you're coming from a place of negativity and anger and frustration and whatever victimhood and tragedy, you're always going to be a condescending jerk. <laughs> you know, like I'm telling you. So anyways, enough. I had a great week. It was a tough week, but it was a great week. And I appreciate everyone who is listening to my podcast and the live stream. I am just shook that people are enjoying this. So thank you so much. And I appreciate the DMs and the emails. I'm trying to go through them all. So I will get back to everyone. And yeah, I appreciate you. So thank you again, as always. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.